Finance is a complex thing, and it can be really intimidating, at least it used to be for me, and sometimes still is, but over the years I've gotten better at organizing and saving, so today I thought I would share five ways I've improved my finances with all of you. And before I get started, shout out to First Tech Federal Credit Union for sponsoring today's video. First Tech is helping people clean up their finances and plan for the future with tons of resources on their website tailored to specific needs like budgeting and saving, debt, home buying and I will have a link to them down below. The first way I improved my finances is I created multiple savings accounts and I dedicated one to each of my financial goals. And you can usually even name these accounts. You could have one called like down payment for a house and another one called taxes. It is a game changer because it's so much easier to tell what you have to spend in certain areas of your life and it's easier to tell how well you're progressing towards your savings goals. Before all of my savings aside from like investments that are in their own investment account, everything else, that was all sitting in one giant pot and I only kind of mentally guesstimated what was allocated to what. But when you make a separate account for each of your savings goals, what you can afford becomes much clearer. If my emergency fund is in its own account and my taxes are in their own account because I'm an independent contractor so my taxes aren't withheld, and travel and leisure is its own account, I know exactly how much money I have to spend on a trip. And when I spend that money, I'm absolutely certain that I'm not digging into other areas of my savings. The next way I improved my finances is I made a savings plan and I assigned a percentage of my income to each savings goal. Back when I was keeping all of my savings in one big pot, whenever I got a paycheck, aside from paying off the things that I owed, like rent and utilities, etc., I didn't really have a plan for where the rest of the money was going to go. It just got dumped in the account with all the other savings. I hadn't really defined my savings goals and how much I wanted to actually actively contribute to them. So now I've planned out what I want to save for, what percentage of my income I'm going to dedicate to that savings, and I've estimated a path to reach that financial goal. So now every time I get paid, the very first thing I do is I pull up a calculator on my laptop or my phone and I multiply the amount by the percentage that I want to be dedicating to each of my financial goals and I distribute the entire paycheck accordingly. And it doesn't matter if that check is for $100 or $1,000, I do the same percentages for every amount amount I receive. And this is how I know that I am consistently watering all of the pots of my savings. Everything that I want to be growing, I know that it is getting some portion of my income. Now, if you're looking to go down a rabbit hole on calculating how much money you can save, First Tech has this page on their website with a whole bunch of savings calculators. What will it take to become a millionaire? What is it worth to reduce my spending? How much of a difference does an interest rate make? For each of these calculators, you just input your numbers and then adjust the other amounts or sliders to see how saving or spending differently will affect your finances. And it's so helpful to define your savings goals because it's easy to have a general idea of how much money you want to save. Like it's easy to think, I would love to have a million dollars someday, but you can actually plug in the numbers of if you save X amount per year for X number of years at X interest rate, you can actually figure out what it would take to become a millionaire. And again, I'll have a link to the First Tech website listed down below so you can go play around on the calculators. They also have articles and videos and so many tools on every area of finance that's super helpful. So if there's anything you want a little more insight on when it comes to your finances, I would highly recommend checking it out. The next way I improved my finances is I embraced the idea of using credit responsibly to build credit history and a healthy credit score. Credit can be a really intimidating thing. I got my first credit card when I was 20 years old and I remember being so hesitant about it because we've all heard the stories of people running up credit card debt Everyone had always told me you have to be really careful with credit cards. And it seems like the easy thing to do then is to just not have any credit cards. But having a good long credit history is extremely useful for you financially. So what I did is I started putting all of my living expenses on my credit card. Expenses that I already had the cash for sitting in my debit account. These are things like groceries and utilities and then I paid it all off in full every month. So I was never paying any interest on it. But I was able to begin building a credit history with on-time payments and basically funneling all of my everyday expenses through a credit card. And then whenever that credit card company would offer me a credit increase, which seemed like it was every one to three years, I would get a notification offering me more credit on that card. I always accepted it because then my overall credit utilization would be lower. If you're new to credit, one of the key factors of your credit score is the percentage of your credit you're using. So if you have a $500 limit on your credit card and you have $100 of charges on there, you're utilizing 20% of your credit 
credit. But if you have a $5,000 limit on that credit card and still $100 worth of charges on there, your credit utilization is now only 2% of your total credit, which gives you a better credit score even though you have the exact same amount of charges. Another key factor in your credit score is your credit age or the length of your credit history. And this one is a big reason why it's important to not shy away from credit because it's literally just the number of years since you started using credit. There's no way to improve this or speed it up. You just have to wait it out. So now why is having good credit important? Well, first it's essential for borrowing money. If you wanna buy a house, a good credit score is going to help you get approved for a loan and probably get you a lower interest rate, which when you're buying something as expensive as a house, even a slightly lower interest rate can save you a lot of money. It can also affect where you live. The last two places I lived in Seattle had minimum credit score required requirements to even apply. I read somewhere that you should think of your credit score as your financial power. A good credit score is going to give you better options. The next way I improved my finances is I began saving and investing with compounding interest. Compounding interest will make you a millionaire. And if you're not familiar with compound interest, I want you to take your to-do list, go to the very top and write it down. Compound interest creates exponential growth on your savings. And it is imperative to begin saving with compounding interest as early as you possibly can can because it progresses exponentially. Starting at 20 and starting at 30 is a huge difference. Not that it's ever too late to begin saving, but I know it's really easy at 20 to think, oh, I'll think about saving in retirement and all that when I get to 30. That golden window of starting in your late teens or in your 20s with compounding interest can mean millions of dollars in difference. It's kind of like how five to the sixth power is this and five to the seventh power is this. This is starting in your 20s, this is starting in your 30s. Five to the sixth doesn't look like it should be that different from five to the seventh, but it's a huge difference. So what exactly is compound interest? Compound interest is when you reinvest the interest that you make on a sum of money. So that interest is now earning interest. So for example, let's say that you invest $10,000 and you average a 10% annual return on that money. $10,000 plus 10% is $11,000. So going into the next year, you now have $11,000 earning 10%. When that $11,000 gets a 10% return, you now have $12,100. And the increase in those numbers might not sound that exciting, but that's because when you start, your line is looking like this. But after 30 or 40 years of it, your line is going to go like this, which is why if you start saving 10 years earlier, like at 20 versus 30 or 30 versus 40, you're going to have 10 more years at the end of your numbers jumping like this every year. And depending how much you were saving, especially in the beginning, the difference can be millions. And then the fifth way I improved my finances is I built an emergency fund and I do not touch it except for emergencies. 2020 has been a perfect example of why having a fund for unexpected things is important. This year has definitely thrown me some financial curveballs and obviously there was no way to predict this. When I was in my mid twenties, I started building an emergency fund, not because I thought I would ever actually need it. I just kind of started doing it because I heard everyone talk about how an emergency fund is so important, but I had this feeling of invincibility, like nothing unexpected is gonna ever happen to me. And I spoke about this in a previous video, but long story short, on a random Tuesday in May, I woke up with pain in my side. I had appendicitis, which is obviously completely unpredictable, but also very serious and needs to be treated. And basically what happened is there was an issue with my health insurance at the hospital I was treated at. I was not aware of this until after I was treated and I was left with a $12,000 bill, which is so much money to have sprung on you with no notice. But fortunately, because I had started that emergency fund years ago, I had money to pay it in full. It didn't ruin me financially. I didn't have to go into debt. I didn't have to take out a loan. I've heard that you should aim to have three to six months of living expenses in your emergency fund, but obviously that's really overwhelming if you're starting out. But if you don't have an emergency fund yet, create a separate savings account and start with whatever you can. Set up an automatic transfer so you know that something every single month is going to that that account, life happens, jobs fall through, cars break down, roofs leak. And if you have an emergency fund, you have something to fall back on. So those are five ways I've improved my finances. I hope that this was helpful for someone. And if you've done anything to improve your finances or you have any tips or tricks that have worked for you, 
please let me know what they are. And again, thank you to First Tech for partnering with me on this video. Credit unions are not-for-profit organizations that offer all the same financial services that you would expect, while also prioritizing giving back to the communities and the members that they serve. And First Tech actually has an annual report on their website that details all of their community involvement, like in STEM learning programs for youth and giving to nonprofit organizations. So again, to learn more about First Tech, I will have a link down below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all are enjoying your start to summer and I will see you in the next video. Bye.